This is Ticker News Insight. Hello and welcome back to Ticker News Insight. I'm Benay Ozdemir. Now, the crypto market has been on a roller coaster this year, with prices fluctuating wildly and regulatory pressures causing significant drops. Now, to talk more on everything about stock markets and crypto, let's bring in Jeremy Britton, who has decades of experience in stock markets and co founded the world's first crypto mutual fund. Thank you for your time, Jeremy. Now, what are your thoughts about large financial institutions such as BlackRock and Fidelity entering the crypto space? I think it's great really for ordinary investors. If you, if you go back sort of 50 or 60 years, it was only the very wealthy people who could invest in stocks and shares and have a bit of a portfolio. And that changed when the big institutions, you know, Vanguard and BlackRock and these guys bought out mutual funds. So ordinary people could put, you know, five or ten thousand dollars in and have a balanced portfolio. So I think it's good for the whole space. It's good for everybody in crypto and it's good for the ordinary people to be able to access cryptocurrency without having to go through the rigmarole of you know, choosing all their own, own selections and things like that. It's going to make things a lot simpler and a lot easier for people. Now, do you support the introduction of central bank digital currencies or, as people may know it as, CBDCs? Uh, it's an interesting one because they've, they've had a CBDC in China for two years and obviously under the Chinese rule it's a bit stricter than in most other countries. So if, if you're caught speeding through a red light camera, they just take the money straight out of your account rather than sending you a bill. Uh, they can also restrict you from buying things. They say, you know, you're, you're it's got type 2 diabetes, so we're going to stop you from spending money on fast food or we're going to stop you from gambling and things like that. So, yeah, in the West, we hope we've got more freedom, but it is a Trojan horse. When you give people programmable money, there is the tendency for the government to step in and say, hey, we're going to look after you by restricting how you spend and where you spend. So uh, I think it's a good idea in principle, but the question is, you know, if, if you trust the government, then go for it. But if there's a little part of you that doesn't quite trust the government, maybe think about something else. Yeah, now you have often referred to Bitcoin as digital gold. Now, is there still a place for, you know, a 10,000 year old currency in the future? Um, I, th I think there is. I think there's still a romantic aspect because gold's pretty and it's shiny and it's malleable. You can make it into jewelry and rings and things like that. And there's always going to be those people who say gold has kept its value for over 10,000 years. You know, an ounce of gold could buy a Roman soldier a uniform back in the day. Um, and now an ounce of gold will still buy you a nice outfit. Whereas obviously all the paper currencies that have ever existed since ancient China and, and these sort of things, they've all, they've all been liquidated to zero over time. So gold is still you know, worthwhile as a currency. The problem with gold is that you, it's difficult to transport. So you can't take you know, $50,000 worth of gold on a plane with you to go shopping. Uh, whereas obviously Bitcoin is, is like EMA, you know, it's instant. It's fully portable. There's still going to be some people who like to write letters. Your grandma might write you a letter for your birthday or something like that. But most people use the email. So I think there's, there's more going to be cryptocurrencies, um, but there might be 10% who hold on to silver and gold as, mm. as currency as well. Yeah, Jeremy, as someone you know, who has run a diversified crypto mutual fund, now for over seven years, how do you feel about mono funds investing in only one asset? Uh, I think it's it's a good introduction. It, it's kind of like, I guess, you know, 15 years ago, if, if your superannuation or your investment manager had said to you, hey, you know, we're going to put all of your money into this great thing. It's called Blockbuster Video. They've got stores all around the place and they've been going successfully for years. Uh, meanwhile, one of your friends was buying the Netflix DVDs that you got that were sent by mail order. Now, they invested in Netflix and you invested in Blockbuster. You'd be very upset right now. Same thing, you know, 15 years ago, if, you know, someone bought the iPhone and you were still a Nokia girl and you invested all your stock in Nokia, um, you'd be very upset right now because they've got Apple stocks and you've got, you've got worthless Nokia stocks. And cryptocurrency has only been around for 15 years. So even when we first started, we thought, what's going to happen if something better than Bitcoin comes out? How can we profit from that? So we started buying other coins. We also bought stock in the exchanges such as Coinbase and thought, you know, if there's a new one that comes out that's going to be the iPhone to the Nokia, then everybody's going to rush to the exchange and sell their old Bitcoin and buy the new XYZ coin. So that's how we diversify. And, you know, it's, it's a big risk to bet at all on one asset, really. And that's the nature of, of diversification. That's investing 101. 
you've got to have your eggs in different baskets because every now and then there'll be one of these events that takes down you know takes down the blockbuster or takes down the nokia and i don't know if, if someone's going to invent a better bitcoin if they do great if they don't that's okay but we're still balanced amongst 40 or 50 different coins just in case and every year for the last seven years the boston coin portfolio has outperformed bitcoin because when bitcoin goes down other things go up and because we hold those other things we actually beat bitcoin and we have done for seven years so i think that's kind of testament to the fact that diversification actually works yeah, it sounds like a lot going on in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency area. Thank you so much for your time, Jeremy. Now, that's the program for now. For more, head to our website at tickernews.co. I'll see you soon.